All right, so I'm waiting in line at Sweetwater Marina in Delacro. Apparently, there's a bunch of other people as stupid as I am because the wind is blowing. It's only 6.30 in the morning. It's supposed to really howl today, but it's a Friday, and that means a lot of people are fishing. But I'm on a mission today. I got my nephew, Jake Springer, with me. He's been dying to go catch some speckled trout, been asking me for weeks, and this is the only window he's got. So we're jumping right through it. Gonna try and put him on some fish today. Where's this guy going? Like, where are you going? You just jumping the line? So hopefully things are not too bad. I know the wind's gonna blow at some point, but maybe first thing this morning, we can get on a good trout bite. What are your expectations, Jake? Hope and catch some fish. That makes two of us. <laughs> All right, so Jake and I made it through the lines at Sweetwater. And now we've come into an area that has some really pretty water. We're at the end of a falling tide, but that east wind is already blowing. It's not terrible. It's probably about 10 right now, but you can just tell. It's got that feel that it's gonna build. I've got Jake set up with a Versamax bolt above a shrimp creole colored matrix shad on a 16th ounce death grip jig head. And I'm starting just tight line and I'm throwing a limbo slice matrix shad on a 3 8 ounce death grip. Just what I had tied on, it's really probably overkill. I should probably switch to a quarter ounce, but I'm gonna give this a minute and then change if I have to. So Jake, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move us that way. So you're gonna have to keep like casting and then like we'll pass it and then you reel in and cast again. So very important with that cork is to pop the hell out of it, like pop it hard. This time of year, like the fish are really aggressive. So when you really pop it, it makes it sound a lot more natural. It sounds like a, a fish feeding. We gotta catch some fish before this wind starts howling. But we got lots of options, as long as we can find clean water. Nice, speckled trout. That's what we're here for and I lost him. <laughs> he smacked it. See how crazy that fish went? Ah, hate to lose the first fish of the day. Kind of feel like, oh, there we go. Fish number two. That's feeling redfish leg. Nope, speckled trout, nice trout. All right, Chris in the box with this one. Oh, if I can get him to stay in the boat. About a 16 inch fish, really nice fish. This episode of Marshman Masson brought to you by Puglia Sporting Goods. If they won't hit that cork, I'll uh, oh, shit. Look, Jake, you see this mixing water right here? I mean, it's really close to us, but throw right in there, right on that corner. I wish we were better positioned. I might, I might pull us out a little bit. There you go, good cast. <laughs> Sorry, Jake. Six. Yeah. So I told Jake my goal for today, and he doesn't fish a lot, so my goal for today is to get him on five fish. Doesn't matter what. I just want to get him on five fish. That's the over under. I'll feel successful if we're beyond that. Five fish that he catches. Now he thinks that number is too low, but we'll see. We're gonna have to take that cork off. They're not gonna hit it. Normally that's, that's the easiest way to catch them. Pop that cork about 100% harder than you're popping it now. There you go. Man, I'm shocking not hitting that. I'm gonna give you the same thing. Oh, oh, you gotta be kidding. I'm gonna give you the same thing I got. I got drilled. If you, all right, if you've seen my recent videos, <laughs> you know that we, my buddy Jonathan snagged two alligators. I don't know that that's what Jake has here, but he's got something big. I'm just sitting here tying baits. I just put on, I, what's that? Gator. Is it a gator? Yeah. You saw it? I see it right there. It's his mouth. <laughs> Look, it, it's, it's an alligator. You hooked an alligator. See ya! <laughs>
Oh my goodness, <laughs> this is incredible. The fourth alligator we've hooked in this area in two trips. He's hooked too because I said it hard. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, have fun. <laughs> the novelty is worn off for me. Like, I just want to go catch fish now. You're going to be doing this for a while, buddy. <laughs> you about to come up, look. All right, yeah. he has the bubbles. Man, if that jig head flies out. All right, get on the side. <laughs> I don't want a jig head in the face. <laughs> oh, there he is, yeah. Oh, you got him hooked in the head. That's a, That's not a small gator. I mean, he's not as big as the ones Jonathan hooked, but he's not small. And it looks like you hooked him in the mouth. Like, he literally hit your bait. Well, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> and now he's like, yeah, I'm done with this. Enough funny games. You see that knot? Mm -hmm. I want to get on the other side of that knot. You can close to that gate with mouth there, buddy. Yeah, well, I don't think he's going to bite me. The hell with the knot. I'll just tie another leader. He's right there. He's right there. You pull up the knot's right there. Yeah, no, but I don't. I don't want to lose a hand. So long, homie. All right, we're back in business after Jake's uh, distraction with the alligator. Hopefully, he doesn't snag any others. I had to cut his line, which meant I had to tie on another leader. It's just incredible how many alligators they have in these bayous this year. It's like way more than I've ever seen. And that one actually looked like he may have hit the bait. He was hooked at least right next to the mouth. So Jake, basically what you want to do, you want to give it kind of a sudden hop, like rather than just a slow drag up, you want to give it a kind of a sudden hop, but then maintain contact with it as it's falling. Because you're almost invariably going to get the hit as it's falling. Look, look at the gator. Look, there's one there. There's a little one over here. Crazy. Definitely seen some bait in this little bayou. It's never a bad thing. So what you also want to do is on each fall, make sure it recontacts the bottom. What tends to happen, if you don't want to get down to the bottom, you might be six inches off, and then the next hop you're a foot off, and the next hop you're a foot and a half off. And those fish are pretty much cruising the bottom. Oh, if the wind could stay like this, today would be a piece of cake. One more cast. But I know it's not gonna stay like this. So what I'm hoping happens at some point today is that we find some fish in a bend of a bayou that are kind of a concentrated school. But lately it hasn't been that way. It's been having to work stretches to pick up one here, one there, kind of like we just did. So Jake, a lot of this is, uh, a lot of having success doing this is reading the water to see where the current like you generally want to throw your cast, you see how there's like a soft edge and a, and a rough edge? You, you basically always want to throw right to that as best as you can. You see like around this point, how the water's soft? Like you want to, you want to work that, that edge. That's where the fish are most likely to be concentrated. See like you threw right in a big grass pile. You're hopeless there. Just reel in and take the grass off and start over. This episode of Marshman Mass On brought to you by Matrix Shad and by Fitzgerald Fishing, and by Cito New Orleans, and by Versamax Quartz, and by Death Grip Jig Heads. Oh, there he is. Oh, you're feeling like a red. You are feeling like a red, but you're out in the middle. Now you're feeling trout-like. Let's see. Undersized red. We'll probably catch 50 of these today. And they're all rubber stamped 15 inches. He's bigger than I thought. He's 15 and three quarters, but not big enough. So Jake, do you feel like you're getting down? Like all the way to the ground? Yes. I feel it bumping along the bottom. Okay, that's good. You'll get some bites. As long as you're getting down. Last cast, we don't get anything here, we're, we're bailing. Bailing like all my girlfriends did in high school. All right, so Jake and I are simply bayou hopping. We left the last one. We, we're hitting another one. 
We've got, uh, I don't know, maybe two or three speckled trout in the box. I think just two. I know I lost one. We also caught a, an undersized red and an alligator. <laughs> so this is an, a bayou that I have fished before. I finished a limit in here a few trips back, but haven't done a whole lot in here since then. But it's at least worth a check. I know I'm going to regret saying this, but right now the wind is not too bad. It went from about 10 to maybe around 5 right now. I know without question that's going to change. It'd be nice to get some fish in the box before that happens. I know when that tide switches, it's going to, it's going to just scream in. It's going to be rolling, being pushed by that east wind. All right, let's go, Jake. Let's go, Jake. Ain't nothing happening here. What are these coming in? Oh, you know what those are? Those are uh, Mexican tree ducks. Those used to be non-existent in South Louisiana. All right, so the bayou tour continues. We're in bayou number three now. Bayou number two delivered nothing. Didn't see quite as much bait in bayou number two as we did in bayou number one. So far, I'm seeing a little bit in this one. This is a short little bayou. Jake has yet to put his first fish on the boat. His over under is five. And so far, he's at zero. <laughs> Take the under. Jake, I tell you what, I got confidence in you. I'm taking the over. I'm taking the over. We're going to catch them right up here in this little bend. That's my prediction. And I haven't been wrong yet. At least not in the last five minutes. Now we mean business. How deep? You see it? 6-2. Good. Oh, what were you? What were you? There we go. There we go. That feels redfish like, Jake. It's actually foul hooked croaker. Not what I was expecting. Or expecting. This is a bad sign. A croaker's already that big. Oh, uh, no. Please, no. Uh, he's feeling redfish like I hope it's not an alligator he's feeling redfish like actually he is he's pulling the boat this could literally be an alligator yeah he feels like a redfish could be a big black drum oh there he goes I'm actually kind of glad I've been fighting him a while that was a big fish I bet he was a big drum I'm sorry, what'd you say that depth was? Would you tell me? Uh, oh, there's some fish there, Jake. Three, five. Let's sit here a minute. Throw a little more to your right, toward that point. There he is, get him, Jake. Get him, Jake. Speckled trout, baby. There you go, Jake. Jake, don't let me down. I took the over. Get that <laughs> fish in the boat. All right. Good job. Get him, Jake. All right. Dude, look at you go. Nice trout. I've gotten two bites. I missed them both. Dude, isn't that pretty? No prettier sight than that. Mm -hmm. There he is, Jake. I got his buddy. He's small. Man, is he small. <laughs> he will not make the cut. There he is. There he is. Now, he was out a little bit. Not the biggest fish I've ever caught, but I think he'll make it. I think we will eat him for Din Din. Yeah, he's a 12-incher. Well, let's check, just to be sure. Oh yeah, 13. There you go, buddy. Thanks for the fight, for the fillets. All right, Jake just put fish number three in the boat. I had a camera battery die, so I missed it, but that's his third speckle trout, third keeper. He had one other throwback, Jake? Yep. So the situation here is we've got a pond out here that's draining through this little pass here, this little funnel. And these fish are set up right here which really doesn't look to me to be the best spot in this little area. 
But what we've discovered is that there's a little fall off, a little shelf right here that these fish are holding along. I caught that, I snagged that croaker, and then I caught a UFO that took off and eventually pulled the hook. And we're steadily putting trout in the boat now that are just sitting there feeding. Now one of the last ones Jake caught threw up a little baby croaker. And this is the time of year when I catch these fish that are feeding on those little croakers. The croakers spawn offshore in the winter time and the eggs and fry move back into these marshes, exclusively in marshes with freshwater influence. They don't go into the highly saline marshes. And by now, by this point in the season, the croakers are big enough that the trout are feeding on them and they tend to congregate on these shelves. But you can definitely feel, no question about it, ledge falling off right here. And this looks to me like it would be a better rising tide spot the rising tide be pushing into it tides falling and that's where they are so i'll definitely check this again at some point on a rise our falling tide has got to be really really close to being dead the tide has already been rising for a few hours at bay Gardine, which is not terribly far from here and i know that because i checked the buoy on my phone and if you don't have the buoys on your phone you're really missing out to get that real-time information while you're fishing it's invaluable i did a video showing how to get the buoys on your phone if you haven't seen it, I'll link to it here. Oh, Jake, he ripped the rod out of your hands. <laughs> I saw that hit. Oh, I, he just ripped the rod out of my hands. What can I say? I bet. What are you, what are you doing when you fish with Larry? There we go. Jake has got this. Oh, oh is that heartbreaking or what? Oh, he was right there. Yeah. The Jake's getting his bottom bite figured out. I'm impressed. Oh, thumpity thump. Come on, Jake, get him back. Oh, that fish is a whole deal by now, but I'm sure he's got a friend. <laughs> You're sitting on number three, aren't you, Jake? Mm -hmm. I hate to leave. I feel like there's more fish here. It's possible that tide's dying. Yep, it is dying. You know, I can tell. You remember we had this soft water way out here? And now it's just retreating. That's why they quit. Man, we got here an hour too late. I bet we could have whacked them. All right, so our tide has died. We knew this was coming. So now we got to bide our time. So I'm going to throw my favorite black light, Zoom Z-Craw. Trying to catch a red or a bass, maybe a trout, but the trout are less inclined to feed in this dead tide. So I think it's going to be a, a redfish bass game for the next 30, 45 minutes, something like that, till this tide switches. Jake is sticking with his Limbo Slice Matrix Shad on a 3 8 ounce Death Grip Jig Head. Unless he has trouble with some grass in this bayou. There we go, Jake. Oh, dude, you caught a trout. <laughs> he might be legal. I don't know. He's getting small. <laughs> he's getting smaller as he gets closer? Uh, he's, he's worth a visit to the, to the ruler, I'll tell you that. Cool. Good job, Jake. Put him on the true serum. Yeah, I knew you were a fish. You sucker. So you got to close his mouth and pinch his tail. He, he makes the cut. Put him in the box. He's a teamer. You make the team. That's, Hello. that's number four, Jake. Not bigger. Come on, Jake. Fish? Redfish? Nice. Good job, Jake. I think he is going to be too small, but we're going to put him on the tape and see. What's your guess? You don't know. <laughs> They're not touching the black light zoom Z craw. I even got a sniff. No chance. Throw them over. Please, I like that leader. I thought you were going over here. Look at that. Oh. Your mom's going to kill you. <laughs> Your mother's going to kill you. <laughs> let's go hit our. Uh, let's go hit our trout spot. And then make our big move. Part of me hates to leave this general area, but no guts, no glory. See how the tide switch? Man, it's screaming in now. Remember before it was coming at us? Uh -huh. We're going to figure these fish out. They're around here. They didn't leave. They're set up some other way. Jake! I knew I would have that thing. Good fish, good fish. All right. All right, just for future reference, next time leave about a rod's length of slack. Jake, I think you're at number five, aren't you? Uh, yeah. I think you are. Not to mention, not to mention two alligators. 
There he is. There he is, Jake. Get him. Oh, he's a monster. That is a monster. Jesus. Actually, you know what? I bet he makes it. I bet he makes the team. Yep. Oh, yeah. 12 and a half, baby. How are y'all? All right, make a cast, but I think we're gonna bail. So Jake, it's deep here, so very important you get to the bottom. 20 feet. 18 feet, probably, realistically. Oh, I got smoked. I got drilled. There's one, there's one, Jake. Three casts, three bites, because I had a bite on my previous cast. You had that bite. And that's a keeper trout. All right, big boy. I gotta make sure you're legal. Now I'm having my doubts. Oh yeah, you're legal. You are legal. It's about time, Jake. You gonna get this one in the boat or no? That's a good trout. So pretty. All right, Jake. Awesome, dude. Nice. Really good fish. Oh, right here. Right at, the boat. right at the boat. I'm talking vertical jigging. I just love it. So, Jake, I don't want to jinx this, but this is one of those deals where we could really end up with 50. These fish are thick in here, and they're not concentrated in one spot. They're, like, all over in here. That's number 14. That means I got to get out the clicker. All right, Jake, every fish you put in has to be clicked. <laughs> get him Jake get him Jake there we go I'm clicking him he's a teamer 100% 200% So Jake and I are closing in on our limit of speckled trout. We are just mall dragging them. Now I'm having them speak in very hushed tones because about 50 yards that way is another boat and he's downwind. He's on the other side of this little island. So he can't really see us, but I don't want him to hear us. I don't want company. <laughs> oh, Jake's got one. Nice. This is just silly action. Very, very common this time of year. Fishing these deep bends in these bayous. It is just so much fun. Right now we got 45, actually, clicking jakes. 46 speckled trout. Four away from our limit. We should hit that very soon. Just an epic day. Man, it doesn't get easier than this in South Louisiana. When you've got good conditions like today, it's easy to be successful. Well, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe to the Marshman Masson channel. And also, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. And until next time, if we don't see you in the marsh, we'll see you right here on Marshman Masson.